Welcome to Handy Quilter Watch and Learn. Today we're going to look at some custom quilting that Christina did. Today I am so excited to have all three of the studio educators here. I'm Kim Sandberg and we've got Christina Whitney and Denise Dowdrick. And we're going to take a closer look at Christina's uh, trellis quilt. That's the name of the pattern we did, right? Yes. So, or Christina, you can call it Perry the Platypus quilt. Perry the Platypus, yeah. that's right. <laughs> that's right. So we had an earlier episode where we discussed our ideas for this, and now we get to look and see what you actually did. So Christina, take it away. Okay, so I pieced it, okay. and I quilted it. Yay! But before I did any of that, um, in our previous episode, we talked about some different questions that we ask ourselves. Okay. So um, I went through all of these questions and kind of decided what the purpose of the quilt was and what threads I wanted to use and all of that stuff. So we'll go through all of that and then we'll get into some of the quilting. Okay. Okay. So the quilting, what is it going to be used for? Well, you have the answer to that one. <laughs> so Christina, what are you going to be using this quilt for? Uh, it's going to be a wall hanging okay. because this pattern was so small. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. it's not really going to be used to cuddle with. So it's, it's going to be more for display. Um, where it's going to be displayed, probably here at Handy Quilter for a while, mm -hmm. and then we'll see where it goes from there. Okay. Okay. What do I want the focus to be or not be? <laughs> so, Christina, what would you like the focus to be or not be? <laughs> Thank you, Denise. <laughs> I'm like, just point to the question you want us to ask. <laughs> okay. Um, I did not want to really focus too much on the piecing. Because Why? I'll, I'll be honest, <laughs> I the piecing was not my best. Okay, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. That's fair. So it I, was challenging. There were a lot of <laughs> tiny pieces in this pattern. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> who who chose this pattern? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when I chose it, I thought it was much bigger. <laughs> I did too. You know, I don't do little quilts. Okay, um, so another question is did you so how did you decide to quilt this and i think i already kind of spilled the beans on this one you decided to do i did custom quilting okay because it is going to be a wall hanging mm -hmm. and because i like to do custom and probably the biggest thing is i spent so much time on this piecing mm -hmm. that I, even if it wasn't the best piecing <laughs> um, but i wanted to make sure that i kind of showed it off a little bit as a wall hanging i like the custom and um, also the amount of time that I put into it. That makes sense, that totally makes sense. So, uh, let's see, what style of quilting did you decide to go with for this quilt? I know that you were kind of trying to decide, especially with the, and, and, maybe, and maybe we just wanna retell the Perry the Platypus, why we keep referring to that. Okay, so Perry the Platypus, it all came up because of my daughter. I asked her what colors to do. And so she sent me the picture of Perry the Platypus, it's a cartoon character, uh -huh. and um, said that she wants these colors. But I later found out after I pieced the quilt that she thought I was actually going to like applique this giant Perry the Platypus. <laughs> and so she was a little bit disappointed, but Aww. she'll get over it, right, Lena? Should we see if uh, <laughs> Lena can give us a uh, nice big smile? She actually happens to be here in the studio with us today. <laughs> There's Lena, she's helping us out with sound today. Yep. So it is still called the, the platypus, and there are a couple little things that I added into the quilt that we'll get to later on that okay. um, kind of drew in. But as far as the style, um, the fabrics I think are more modern because they're solids, and the piecing's a little bit more traditional with the stars. So I just kind of mix and match things. Okay. So I've got some feathers in there. I've got some geometric shapes, and it's just a mismatch. Cool. So I'm excited to see what you did. Yeah. So, next question. Yes. Adding. What adding did you decide to roll with? I roll. <laughs> I got that one. A roll of batting. I use two layers of batting. So, okay. usually when I do wall hangings or show quilting, I generally do the two layers so mm -hmm. it really shows the quilting. So, um, I did a layer of 80 20 okay. and then a layer of wool on top. Cool. So. And then since we're talking about that, I'll just jump into the threads. Yes. Yeah. If you guys are okay with that. Absolutely. Okay. So the thread that I chose, big surprise here, I did monopoly on top. Wait. 
I stole it. No. Yeah. I, I love using Monopoly, especially with this quilt, with it being two very distinct colors. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to try to find a thread that would blend with both of them. Mm -hmm. So I just did the Monopoly on the top. But I did have a lot of fun on the back because I didn't have a thread that matched my backing. Oh. So I went with what I had that was closest. And here's a picture of the thread I ended up choosing. But it's a Fantastico from Superior Threads. And so it kind of blends between this blue and greenish color. So it was kind of fun on the back. That's so, so fun. I don't think I've ever done something so daring on the back of the quilt because usually nobody sees the back. Yeah. So that's well, really fun. Hopefully they won't because some of my <laughs> tension wasn't perfect. But you know, actually, I do want them to see the back. But that'll be for later on. OK, so th that's the thread that I chose. Um, so the Fantastico and the bobbin and then mm -hmm. Monopoly on the top. Okay. Okay. I also um, had to take into consideration how much time I had with this one. Yeah. So I was very limited. Um, I actually pulled it off my frame about eight o'clock last night. Oh wow. Okay. So it's still attached to the leader. You'll see that here in a minute. <laughs> so literally, like I was crunch time to get this one done. Okay. Um, so I do still have it on the leader. So if I decide I want to go back and add some more, I can. But nice. I, I think I'm good with it. You guys will be the judge. Okay. After you see the quilting. Oh, did you hear that? We could see the quilt. Oh, quilt judges. We're going to be the quilt police. Quilt police. Ooh, maybe I should take that back. <laughs> There's no quilt police. There's it's no, all good. Yeah. It's all good. We'll love it. We'll love it. Okay. So, auditioning quilt design. Okay, so how did you go about figuring out which designs you wanted to quilt on this custom quilt? Lots of trial and error. Okay. So um, the quilt behind us, we talked about this before, mm -hmm. I did a design and thought it was so wonderful and then I started stitching it out and it was a mess. So I had to unpick the whole thing. Right. Um, so this one, I was a little bit more careful. Okay. And originally I wanted to create these great secondary designs and make it more the quilting than the piecing. Mm. Um, but I changed things up a little bit. So I used a bunch of different tools to audition. Um, the first thing I did was a drawing app. It's called Draw Free. On your phone? Um, that one I did on my computer. Okay. Yeah, so here, there's some pictures of that. I also did, uh, what's it called? Um, you Doodle, which is the app on my phone that I used. Okay. Um, I also used Pro Stitcher Designer and loaded the quilt as my backdrop. And I also used preview paper. Wow. So you can tell. You used it all. I went through a lot of work trying to come up with a design on this one. Like, it just was not coming to me. Okay. So, yeah. So I used all of those different tools that are available to end up with the design that I came up with. Awesome. Awesome. So, so are you ready to take a look, a closer look at the quilt? Or are we going to, actually, we want to walk through the quilting process, right? And I know that you quilted this at home in your mm -hmm. home studio yep. and you've got some uh, we've actually got some footage here that you shot in your home studio right yeah so I'll walk you through each of the different elements okay. so you don't get you don't have to sit there and watch me quilt the entire thing because again it did take a long time but I I'm going to show each one of the elements and kind of what tools I used for it and how I set it up so let's take a look I'm now ready to do my stitching so the first thing that I am going to do is stitch in the ditch around each of the stars. And I'm going to use Pro Stitcher with the mark function. So to do that, I'm gonna go Pro Stitcher, record, and then I'm gonna move the machine into position. I'm actually gonna start right out here. Now, you'll also notice I've got my glide foot on, and as I'm moving it, it's kind of catching just a little bit. That is because I've got two layers of batting and my seams are really, really thick in certain sections. So the glide foot's gonna help me go over those sections. Okay, got it in position. Then I can use the mark button on my screen, or I can also use the diamond on my handlebar. And I'm just gonna go around. And let's refresh so you can see the screen. Right there. Up, oh, that one didn't ding. Let's go back. So 
So after I get done going around the star, I'm also going to do the square in the center of the star. So I'm just creating my own design here. You'll notice on the star, I started at one of the corners of the square, so I can just continue right into that square. And back to my start point. And now you can look at the screen and see that I've created a design that I can now stitch out. So I'm going to baseline it, pro stitcher, quilt, run, proceed. Now, the more accurate that I am with dropping my points, the better the stitch in the ditch is going to be. And also, I'm using this monopoly thread, so it blends pretty well. So even when I'm not on perfectly, um, it's not going to make that big of a difference. So I'm going to do that for all of the stars. And I'm also going to save this design that I created, take it into a Pro Stitcher Designer and kind of uh, pretty it up a little bit. And then I will continue and I will stitch some extra stars out in this open space here and continue the pattern. So that's my plan. So that is the star. The next thing I'm going to do is create a diamond shape in here. And I'm going to do the same thing using mark. So I'm going to clear this existing design. So pro stitcher record. And I'm just going to clear that. I'm going to bring my machine into position, drop a point. I want to make sure I don't cross over the orange piece here, so I'm going to drop a point there. So there's my first diamond. Now I could go in and resize it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to baseline that and then I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to go to edit and duplicate and I want to resize that because what I'm going to do is create a smaller diamond in the center there. So modify, oh, resize, turn on my lock and I know I want to just drop this down to two because I've been playing around with it. So now if you look at my screen, I've got two separate diamonds. I'm going to select both of them using my select all tool. And you can see now that all of them are black, so I can uh, stitch them all out, but there will be a jump in between, which is what I want to do. So let's baseline that and pro stitcher, quilt and run. And proceed. Thank you. 
And you might have noticed that it did that auto jump where it just moved the machine over by itself to do the second diamond. Um, so I will need to go back afterwards and cut that bobbin thread that's going from here to here. So that's a diamond. I will continue creating those diamonds um, in all of the sections around the stars and then also coming out into the border. The next element I want to work on is this little section right here. So I wanted to put some circles in and you can kind of see I did some up here. So what I did was I created an area inside the orange sections so that it didn't cross over the orange. So I'm just going to go in and do an area and I'm going to do a multi-point and my area is going to be a square but that is okay. Okay let's refresh so we can see that area. Then what I did was I brought in a circle from the design folder so file design open and it's in the blocks and it is called circles so there it is circle open and I aligned it to the center so modify align center let's refresh again and then I just went in and went to modify resize with the lock turned on I'm just gonna make it smaller maybe a little bit bigger and then reposition because I can see it's kind of in a little bit there. I'd rather have it too far into the area than out. So I'm thinking that that looks, that looks pretty good there. Okay, so I'm gonna baseline that. And then I wanted to create another circle. So we're going to edit and duplicate, but I want that circle smaller. So let's modify it by resizing it. Again, the lock is turned on and I'm just gonna pick the number two because that's what I've been using throughout. And now you can see I've got two circles. Now I want to put a crosshatch in there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in a crosshatch. So it's File, Design, Open. And I'm trying to remember which folder this one was in. Oh, it's right there. Crosshatch Square. It's in the Pro Stitcher Library and Open. I'm just going to drag that over. And at this point, I did some playing around, manipulating, so I could resize that down if I want. And I'm gonna call that good. Okay, so I wanna do some cropping, but to do the cropping, I need an area. So I am done with this square area. I used that to set up that initial circle. So I am fine with that. I'm just gonna baseline to freeze any changes I've made and then I'm gonna close out that area. Now I want to select this inside circle. Now to tap it, that's gonna be kind of difficult because I've got so much going on there. So I'm gonna come over to my workspace and I'm gonna tap on the circle there. Perfect, so that's what I've got. Now I'm going to use a new tool called um, rubber band area. So I've got area turned on and then there's RB area. So I'm going to put rubber band area. Okay, so we're going to modify, crop, outside, close our edges, and then we'll want to baseline that. And then I could stitch all of those out together. Circle. 
I'm going to change it. So I want my outside circle to stitch first. So that when it draws in, it doesn't go outside of where I want it to stitch. Okay, there's one circle. I'm going to do some modifications and then we'll do another one. Okay, I'm excited to see how the modifications turn out. So I'm going to go ahead in this next section and create that original area using my multi-point so that it doesn't go over the orange. Okay, let's refresh. Ooh, so nice and straight. Okay, let's bring in the save design that I created. File design, open. It's on my USB. It's this one here. Okay, let's align it just to get it in the ballpark. Ooh, that actually looks pretty good. It is going, let's refresh. It is going outside of my area. So what I'm gonna do is just resize it a little bit. So we're gonna resize, my lock is on. Let's type in a number, 3.8, kind of in the middle there. Okay, it's a little bit inside there, which is good. I'd rather have it inside than outside again. I think those others are looking good. So now I need to find my on a poly thread there. It, oh goodness, this, oh no, nope, that's a different one. Here's the tail I need. Okay, now let's go in a quilt. I like this one because I've got that outside circle stitching first. jump over and you'll notice where I started this inside circle is also where I'm going to start my cross hatch so it's going to be continuous one less tie off to do just a little bit of over stitching a lot less than what I was doing before happy. Thank you, Pro Stitcher Designer. Okay, I'm going to put a little ghost one in here, ghost one over there, and then just start filling in. So next thing you'll see will be hopefully an almost finished quilt, and then we'll add some fills and stuff. So close to being done. Last section, I am going to now do this border. So I'm gonna find my middle section, and I'm using a chalk pencil here. I'm just gonna chalk there, and then my mitered corner. So I'm gonna essentially divide the quilt into, or the border into eight sections. So two on the top, two on each side, and two on the bottom. And then I'm gonna fill that in with these um, molar shaped feathers. Got a new bobbin in there, and let's go ahead and bring it up. Okay, you can see I'm just kind of using the edge of the quilt as my spine.
I'm not going to cross this line. Put one more little one in there. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat that in the other seven sections. Oh, wow, Christina, holy cow. Okay, this is amazing. This is it. This wow. is so fun. <laughs> okay, I'm feeling like mine is like chopped liver now. This looks amazing. <laughs> I love what you ended up chopped doing. Liver. Yeah, because originally I talked, I wanted to do like this giant circle uh -huh. and it just wasn't working for me. So then I thought, oh, well, I want like these circles to kind of pop. Mm -hmm. Everything's so linear in the quilting, so yeah. I wanted something circular. Um, so I put those circles in, and then I was like, oh, I want to put something in the center of the circle mm -hmm. to really emphasize this part. So I opted to do a crosshatch because that's Perry the Platypus's tail. tail. Oh, there I you caught go. that. I caught that as soon as I saw it. it. I really did. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad you got that detail in there. Yes. Yeah, so in our original video when we were talking about this, yeah. um, I, I challenged all of us to incorporate some kind of a secret little message or something mm -hmm. in it. So that's my, my Perry the Platypus in there. Very cool. But it gets even better. Uh, okay, so what else, what other elements of Perry? I know you were gonna put a Perry in here, right? <laughs> okay, we're gonna flip it over. Okay, so this might be a little bit harder to see. Okay. Um, if I were to go back and do it again, I would use thicker thread. <laughs> but I... <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. So can okay. we see that at so all? So if we, if we uh, go out a little bit here, it says Perry the platypus. And then she actually digitized Perry here in the center. You can see his eyes and his hat here, his little bill coming down his little hand, hand, his tail. Oh, very nice. You managed to get a little bit of that texture right on the tail. Oh, Look perfect. at that. And then it says by Christina Whitney. Yep, and so, I put the year 2024, oh, woohoo! 2024. And Utah, where it was stitched. Wow. Okay, so I did that label before I quilted it. So wow. let's insert a quick little video showing how I did that label real quick. So I'm gonna do things a little bit differently here. I have my quilt all loaded, but what I'm gonna do is pull this top back out of my way. And you will see now that I've got my backing with lots of threads, my 80-20 batting and a wool batting. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch out my label upside down. So I'm gonna pretend like this is the bottom side of my quilt and the top will be down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, pull in my design that I created using Pro Stitcher Designer. And let's look at our screen up here. So it's my Perry the Platypus, and I've already flipped it upside down so that it will stitch out the correct direction when I stitch it out. And my backing is this the greenish color, so I'm gonna use the orange thread in my bobbin so that will create the label on the back. stitch so the next thing I'm going to do is take my quilt top lay it right over top of that and then I'm going to base the top and sides and start stitching. Christina that is such a cool technique. I know that we did a video um, maybe what a year a year or two ago mm -hmm. that actually shows how she did this yeah. so we can um, if you have 
if you want it more in-depth on that technique. Yeah, there's another video there. refer to that one. Yeah. Well, that is such an awesome touch. Yeah. I definitely, yeah, wow. I think you take the cake on this one. So normally <laughs> I would have used a thicker thread, but I was being kind of lazy. Mm -hmm. And I had an orange pre-wound bobbin, so mm. I just threw the orange in there. But now I'm thinking, oh, I should have used a thicker orange so it would show more. But, you know, you learn things mm -hmm. with each project that you do. Exactly. So anyway, there's my secret platypus. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, we didn't say that she had to do it on the front, did we? No, I don't think I don't <laughs> think we did. I don't think we did. Well, this is fantastic. So, okay, so one last question. What are you going to bind it with? Because that is something that you haven't done yet. Oh, yes. First, I should take it off the leaders. <laughs> Trim it down. Um, I think I'm going to use the same orange. Okay. Just to really frame it up and give it that extra little pop. I totally second that. I think that's going to look yep. amazing. Oh, it's wow. great. I love all the little hidden touches because, again, I can see that platypus tail in there. Your label is genius, though. I, I was very... You win. You win. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a competition. I was so close to stitching a little tiny pair of the platypus in one of the diamonds here. So the diamond was the one thing that I was debating if I wanted to put a fill in there. Mm -hmm. But I think I kind of like it. It's really allowing mm -hmm. the circles to pop more and the diamonds kind of blend a little bit, so. I agree. Yep. Oh, it's fantastic. What an amazing custom quilted quilt. Uh, I think it's really fun to see your entire process here. This is definitely um, a great example of what you can do if you kind of think outside the box of traditional quilting, Yeah, I think. It was fun and it's done. Except Almost. the binding. Almost. It does have a label, though. It does have a label. <laughs> you, you definitely win. All you got to do is bind this baby, and you are done. Bind it and put a sleeve on it, because yep. we'll, have to, we'll yep. have to have a sleeve on it so we can hang it here. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Christina. That was fantastic. Yeah. I just want to say, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if our viewers have more questions, they can always leave those in the comments, absolutely. and we'll, we'll answer those. So Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. We're always happy to answer that. Um, by the way, this pattern, the trellis pattern, is available to purchase on the Handy Quilter website. So if you are interested in making this quilt, you can visit handyquilter.com and you can download it, or you can purchase and then download mm -hmm. this, uh, the pattern for the piecing. Um, the quilting, we're not gonna have, you, you can do your own awesome custom quilting. Just watch the video and follow along. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe and stick around at the end if you want to see if one of your quilts is featured. Um, we pick up quilts every week from Instagram or Facebook and we feature them at the end of our videos. And be sure to have fun quilting. <laughs>